Let me go straight across to parliamentarian Priyanka Chaturvedi, who is joining us live on the broadcast. Priyanka, thank you very much for your time. Between the Adani saga and the apology hangama, parliament hasn't functioned properly yet again today. Who do we blame? Uh, I'm sure you'd know who to blame and where it starts from. Business Advisory Committee had met a day prior to the Parliament session mm -hmm. convening. And all the business of the House was discussed in that particular meeting. Unfortunately, the first thing we see in the Rajya Sabha on the beginning, the first day, that the Leader of the House stands up, speaks for 10 minutes, without giving a notice prior that he would be raising a topic. A topic that he raises has nothing to do with the Rajya Sabha workings or with any Rajya Sabha member of Parliament. The person he is accusing is a member of Parliament of the Lok Sabha. And the idea was just to create a disruption and not allow the House to function. And I'll tell you why they don't want the House to function. Because they know that there is immense pressure. Because there are new revelations coming out of the Adani saga every single day. They do know that Enforcement Directorate is now being used to target most of the opposition leaders. And today I had a press conference where I've explained how in Maharashtra things have worked. Where most of the case against the opposition, as soon as they changed parties, were totally put in the deep freezer. There has been no action, nothing, no arrest, nothing. Well, those who continue being in the party are harassed every single day with new cooked up charges through a man who is a former MP of uh, the Bharti Janta Party, Kirit Sumaya. So this is what is happening there. We have onion crisis, uh, you know, onion farmers uh, uh, protesting. We have uh, 18 lakh uh, government officials who are on a strike because of uh, old pension scheme. So there are various issues to be discussed, but the government doesn't want to discuss this. Uh, but, but the opposition, apart from that, is also saying that we are not being allowed to speak in Parliament. You know, how can the, opposi uh, the op opposition can claim that simply? And I'll give you another example. Ten minutes, the leader of the House speaks. And within one and a mm -hmm. half minutes, the leader of opposition has to wrap mm -hmm. up. So this semblance of, oh, we are trying to have a democracy, a democratic model, it's just not working. If you're giving 10 minutes to the uh, leader of the house, then maybe a 7-8 minutes for the opposition leader is a valid ask. But you switch off the mic, you switch off the telecast, you're totally giving this uh, message across to the people that you don't want a discussion and it is the opposition to blame. Opposition has so, and I've already given you three things from my state that I want to discuss. But it cannot be discussed because Parliament, they do not... Uh, okay, so this information was given yesterday that they should apologize before the, the before the business is conducted. These were the words of the Leader of the House, that apology is, should be uh, given before we allow the conduct of uh, the business hours to be conducted. We had leaders of the Treasury, I mean MPs from mm -hmm. Treasury benches coming to the well of the House. So, I mean, you know, you cannot have a one-sided narrative where you say, oh, we want a discussion, but it's the opposition which is doing that. If that was the case, why did you start the same thing again today? We were having a very nice discussion where we were congratulating the winners of Oscars. We were congratulating, uh, uh, you know, the Indian story of uh, winning Oscars. And as soon as the business hour started, he, the, again, the leader of the house took off by saying there should be an apology first. So you don't want the House to function. And that is an unfortunate position to be in. And actually goes on to prove that what Mr. Rahul Gandhi is speaking outside the, of this country, what he's uh, speaking every day inside the country, is that democratic process and constitutional norms are being bypassed. And we should be worried about it. And we should be coming together to fight this. Uh, why, do you, why do you think the government itself is stalling the parliament, as you claim? Uh, because they don't have answers to many things. First is the, the, the biggest problem staring at us right in the face, where we have Enforcement Directorate, CBI, IT. Where CBI was called the case parrot before the Bharti Janata Party era. It was used by the BJP to say that we will give clean governance. And when we come to power, we will ensure that these independent institutions work for the nation and do not work for any political party. And they are uh, accountable. They, they are uh, transparent in their conduct. We have seen how they, these agencies have been undermined. Out of the you know political cases that are going on against political people, 95% of them happen to be from opposition. And if out of those 95%, some choose to switch to the BJP or their allies, that those cases are put into deep freezer. 
So that is one thing. Institutional morality is fast diminishing. The second problem, the staring at us right in the face is uh, the stock manipulation. Shell companies stock overpricing by Adani Group, 2014 onwards to 2023, from moving from a rank of 300 odd in the Forbes uh, uh, rich, uh, list of rich uh, people, moves to number two and number three positions only in this 2014 to 2023 period. And we see the stock market crashing, $12 uh, billion dollars worth of uh, uh, market capital getting wiped off. And you don't want a discussion, you don't want to check why SEBI was sleeping at the wheel. You don't want a, uh, you know, ED, IT, CBI, uh, SFIO, DRI to investigate. What is stalling you? Why are you stalling all of this process if everything's transparent and there hasn't been any political support? There's no crony capitalism. Why are you shying away from a joint parliamentary committee to ask these people who should be accountable that why were they found sleeping? Why is it that the chairman of LIC gets an extension and he says, I'm willing to, uh, you know, uh, pay more price for, uh, invest more in the, uh, uh, in the Adani group? Then you have SBI chairman who again gets an extension and even he ends up saying that this is not their money for them to choose. This is not their position for them to, you know, uh, overexpose their banks and their positions to support one particular group. Several nationalized banks are overexposed. This is public's money. This is not an Adani's money. This is public's money who earned, who, you know, worked from the age of 18 till the age of retirement. They save this money for their own, uh, you know, uh, expenses. And you, you are ending up playing with those. So why should we not hold you to account? Why should we not ask questions? This, these are the questions they can't answer on price rise, on uh, corruption, etc. That is why they're running away. And they have nine states going into an election. Okay, Priyanka. Priyanka, we'll leave it there for the moment. Always good to chat with you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Mirror Now.